Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made, uh, and we shall rejoice here at one worship place and be glad in it. Uh, we want to shout out loud, uh, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus is Lord, uh, and we are making him the Lord of our lives today. Amen. And every day, amen. Glory to God. Uh, our message today is don't sink with the ship. Make the adjustment. Don't sink with the ship. Make the adjustments. Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Don't sink with the ship. Make the adjustment. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love and kindness, your compassion, which fails not. We thank you, O oh God, that you are that you are with us, and you said you will not leave us nor forsake us, and that your word is true. We ask you right now, Lord God, that you, O oh Lord, would anoint our ears that we may hear, O oh God, this word. And, O oh God, you, O oh Lord, will give us revelation, wisdom, and knowledge, and understanding as we open up our hearts to receive today. O oh God, we'll take this world with us and run with it. Use your servant for your glory. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't sink with the ship. Make the adjustment. Last week, we learned that the apostle Paul was shipwrecked three times, and some scholars believe it was four times. Either way, one is enough to deal with. One is enough to for a person to have to deal with. Uh, imagine cruising along on a ship going to wherever it is you, you are going, wherever it is that you are going. All oh, the conditions are suitable. The weather is nice. Uh, uh, you got everything that you need. Uh, and then a few hours later, you are making all types of decisions to survive because the ship is sinking. In reality, this describes the life that we are living right now. Let's flash back three years or even two. Gas prices was less than $3, and now it's $4 or more for regular. Help us, Jesus. Milk was less than $2.50 a gallon, and now now it's four plus dollars a gallon. Help us, Jesus. Uh, interest rates uh, for mortgages were averaging 3.95%, and now it's almost 6%. Uh, we need your help, Lord. Uh, have mercy on us today. Uh, it seems like all of this uh, has happened overnight. Uh, pinch me uh, and wake me up from this nightmare. Oh, help us, Jesus. Help me up me, Lord. We are on a, a ship that is sinking slowly, but it can make a turn for the better. It can make a turn for the better. All is not lost, people of God. All is not lost, people. It is not lost until, ah, so now we have to make some adjustments. So until things get better, how do you adjust? Acts chapter 27, we will discover how the Apostle Paul and others lived to tell the story. God wants you to live to tell the story of how you made it over. Oh, glory to God. Acts 27, verses 17 to 26 reads, After hoisting it up, they used support to upgird the ship. Then fearing that they would run aground on the citrus, citrus, they lowered the gear, and thus they were driven along. Since we were violently storm-tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, or no small tempest laid on us, all hope of being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, 
Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I belong and to whom I worship, O oh, glory. He said, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Paul, you must stand before Caesar, and behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. And so take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we must run aground on some island. It is evident that these men had to make some physical and emotional changes to survive. What can we learn from them? One, to lighten your load. What can you learn from them? Two, to handle your load until it was reduced. What can you learn from them? Three, to change your heart's response. There is nothing we have that God cannot restore or replace in our lives. Oh, glory to God. You must adjust. You must adjust, adjust, adjust. You must make the adjustment. And because you need to make adjustments, don't mean that you are failing. It does not equal failure. Don't Think that because you need to make adjustments, uh, oh, oh, God, help us, Jesus, uh, that you have to be in gloom and doom. You don't have to be depressed about it. Make the adjustment. There is a joy in knowing that God has spoken over your situation. He's spoken over my situation. You must start to consider what you should be or should be doing to lighten your load. You got to consider it. What shall you do to lighten your load? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What shall you do? Since we were violently tossed, storm tossed, they began the next day, to jetson the cargo. That means that they began to toss the cargo overboard. Sometimes we got to throw stuff overboard. Lighten your load. It is not easy to make obvious decisions while under great pressure. These men had to make a decision that would affect them both physically, mentally, as well as their future. A load can be a, a weight or a source of pressure created by something or someone. For example, Elaine is loaded down with the amount of work needed for her to meet the project deadline. Tom is carrying the load of supplying for his family in a financial crisis. Tom's and Elaine's load is not one of a physical nature. It's not something that they can put in a bag and carry. But it is a worry that becomes a heavy weight upon their hearts or a burden to them. The word for load that is often used in the Bible is burden. 
On the other hand, Jesus knows how to deal with our burdens, our loads. He knows how to deal with it. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The wonderful thing about having a relationship with Jesus is that he makes our burdens light. Oh, glory to God. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, glory to God. Matthew chapter 11, verses 30. The apostle's load was already lightened because he had a relationship with the one who lightens burdens. Oh, hallelujah. Paul's load was lightened by the word that was spoken to him by God. For this very night I stood there stood before me an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. Acts 27 verses 23 to 25. Remember, there were two loaves that these men had to lighten. One physically and one emotionally. Now Paul wanted to help them. He wanted to help them lighten their load. Not physically, but emotionally. It is also written by the same apostle that we ought to bear one another's burden, and so we will fulfill the law of Christ. It is God's law. It is God's will that we help one another. Galatians chapter 6, verses 2. If you have and you can, you need to help your neighbor lighten his or her load and do it in the love of Christ. Don't focus on their load alone, but you must also focus on continually lightening your own load, your load. And the, on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. There's a translation that says they threw parts of the ship and furniture overboard. Handle your load until it's reduced. That's what they were doing. Reducing and reducing and reducing. We all know that some of the things causing us to be loaded down, away down, may last a while and not resol be resolved in a week or a day. For example, the pressure of a broken relationship that seems to cause continual weight on our heart. Do you give up on making things right, knowing that that person is important to you? No. There are some relationships that you can't throw overboard. There are some relationships that you have to save. And there are some relationships that God may say, throw that one overboard. Let it go, in other words. Uh, then there are some things we have to work diligently on letting go, like overspending. So if we're in a sinking ship a financial crisis of an economy. We just can't be out here spending and spending, excessive spending and excessive spending. We have to really bring it in. We have to lighten that load of financial burden that is on us. Excessive spending to maintain an image is not going to help you stay afloat when the economy is sinking. Your family, friend, or neighbor may be able to help you with your load, but it is up to you to make every effort to reduce it on your own. Keep in mind, they have their own loads to carry. You have to handle your load until it's truly lightened. Galatians chapter 6 verses 5 places the responsibility of the load on the person carrying it for each will have to bear his own load. Every man aboard the ship with Paul 
who were allowed to put their hands to work had the part in lightening the load. They played a part in lightening the load of that ship so they can survive. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. Parts and furniture went overboard. They made it a personal thing for them. There was no need for the writer to express they used their own hands. This gives us the impression that they all took the responsibility to lighten the load. Notice the writer also mentioned it being the third day. They must have assessed the situation and found a need to keep on throwing things overboard. We have a reason to keep on going, knowing that God is on our side. Oh, glory to God. Help us, Jesus. You must let the Holy Spirit guide you through the process. For the Holy Spirit knows the plan that God has for you to stay afloat today. Help us, Jesus. Remember, Paul had a visit from heaven to instruct him on what was going to happen. It was God's divine in intervention. We need that divine intervention right now. You and I need that divine intervention right now. Uh, oh, glory to God. Help us, Jesus. Uh, help us, Holy Spirit. Uh, so take heart, men, uh, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. Paul was addressing their heart for their heart response needed to change. You must change your heart response. When unforeseen situations take place that are outside of our norm, our heart's response can be fear, dread, or panic. It doesn't matter if the situation is good or bad. All we know is that something is about to change. People have put change in a bad category, adding fear of the unknown. <coughs> While there is a lot of good that comes out of change. I'm not saying that a pandemic is good change. I'm not saying that a sinking economy is good change. Instead, there are times we must look deeper for the good in such drastic situations. I have heard people say that the pandemic have caused them to realize how they were doing things must get better, must change for the better. For example, people are retiring in order to do self-care. They recognize that life has not always been, that has, life has always been about work, 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 work. And not their health, mental health, or emotional health. Help us, Jesus. Some have realized that they have not spent real time with their families and discovered a lot more about themselves during the lockdown. Paul did not say, that the ship would be saved. He said, yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. Acts 27 and 22. They had to set their hearts and minds to respond to the change that will take place. This is why the apostle repeated the word of the Lord to them. And then he said, therefore, I urge you to take some food, for it will give you strength. For not a hear is to perish from the head of any of you. And when, you had said, and, and when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. Then they were, then they all were encouraged 
and ate some food themselves. Acts chapter 27, verses 34 to 36. Their heart's response changed from discouragement to encouragement. How are you responding to the changes that are taking place? Our response should be, let it be your will, God. Let your will be done. God's will for you is not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future according to Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Uh, plans to prosper you uh, and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Oh, glory to God. Uh, yes, it is scary to know that the ship will be destroyed. But on the other hand, I have a future, oh God, ahead of me because I will be saved. Oh, glory to God. If you have a future, then you can rebuild or things can be replaced or a new opportunity can arise for you. Our hearts, like these men, should go from gloom and doom to rejoicing and hope. Oh, oh, glory to God. The right heart response will take us a long, long way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In closing, life does not end because things are shaking and ships are sinking. For God has a purpose for your survival. Don't look down, but look up. Oh, glory to God. Look up to Jesus, your burden bearer, and the right you need to stand on for hallelujah for he is a good Lord pray and seek the Lord for he will help you to make the necessary adjustments he will help you to lighten your load he will help you to handle your load until it's reduced he will help you to change your heart's response the more we feel Feed our hearts and minds with the word of God. Oh, glory to God. The more we will rejoice, the more we can rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. For God will not leave you, nor will he forsake you. Know that he will not leave you, nor will he forsake you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you will not leave us nor forsake us. That you have a plan for us to survive the times that we are in. Lord God, we pray right now that you will help us to persevere. That you will help us, oh God, to preserve. Father, help us to lighten the load. Rid ourselves of the things that we don't need in this time. Help us, oh God, to continue to do what is necessary as things change and times change. To even get even lighter. Help us, Lord, to change our heart when things seem so dark. Let your light shine. Help us to see the light. Don't let us walk around in gloom and doom. Because you're the light that we need and brighter days are ahead. So I pray now, Lord God, that each and every one of us here in this word will yield our spirit to your spirit so that we will know how to survive and that we may help others to do the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We don't want to believe that everyone has a relationship with Christ. But we want you to survive during this time by having that relationship. You must be wondering, how am I going to survive with a relationship with a Lord that I don't see? Because he's the creator of all things. He will speak to your heart. He will speak to your mind. And give you understanding. He will speak in your dream. He will speak in visions to you. And give you understanding of what you need to do 
to survive. But you have to have a relationship with him. You have to believe in him. His name is Jesus. Jesus wants that relationship with you today. When all fails, you're trying in everything. So why not try this relationship with Jesus? Why not come into this relationship and see how it works out for you? If you're considering coming into that relationship today, I want you to understand that Jesus died for you, and he rose again. He suffered for you, and he rose from the dead, and now he's sitting in heaven with the Father, waiting for you to join him on this. He said, I will go and prepare a place for you. He's preparing that place right now. Then you must understand that you are a sinner. That's why you need Jesus, because we do all types of wrong things in this world. And that's why we need him. We need him to forgive us. Because the Father does not allow sinners in death. But he wants you to come through your relationship with Christ, because Christ will help you to be able to get to where he is. Then you must believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is real and that he has forgiven you. And he wants you to know that you are forgiven. And when you are believe, when you believe that you are forgiven, he wants to be the Lord of your life. He said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, then you will be saved. That is what the word of God says. So Jesus wants you today to make this confession. And we make our confession in the form of God. So let's pray this prayer together. Let's bow our heads and pray this prayer together. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Take away my sin. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And if you said that prayer, angels in heaven are rejoicing. And so are we here at One Worship Place. Hallelujah. We are rejoicing knowing that you are part of the family, knowing that you are in the relationship with Jesus Christ, the best relationship in your life. And if you said that prayer, we want you to call us so that we can continue to encourage you and pray for you. And if you don't want to call us, email us and let us know who you are so that we can put you on our prayer list and that we can continue to pray for you and with you. God bless you. God loves you. And we love you too. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our church family here at One Worship Place would appreciate your support in many ways that you can give. And through the Giftify app, Cash app, by mail, or on our website, God bless. 